I have been observing Venus ever since 1934, when I was a boy of 11. And in that time, I've seen the whole gamut of emotions. Theories have come, theories have gone. Venus has changed, either as a watery world, or as a carboniferous world, or a desert. I've seen it all. Right up to the start of the space age, Venus was still described as the planet of mystery. The closest of all the planets, and yet we knew nothing about the surface at all. So you could really put there what you liked, and no one would get to say you were wrong. And that's exactly what happened. Through history, astronomers have mistaken the clouds of Venus for land and sea, canals and continents, teeming with exotic life. Many of the scientific theories beat science fiction into a cocked hat. Even in my lifetime, there have been four possible models of what the surface of Venus might be like. And the first of these was the Arrhenius model, the most attractive one of all, I think, the kind of Carboniferous model with a primitive life. He pictured a kind of idyllic Venus, warm, but not too warm, uh, with um, luxuriant vegetation and plants of the fern and horsetail variety, swamps everywhere, and possibly things like dragonflies and amphibians. On the other hand, it was thought there might be oceans there, and that was backed up by very eminent astronomers, such as Whipple and Menzel, and a kind of marine Venus. If there are oceans on Venus, the carbon dioxide in the atmosphere would have got into the water and fouled it, and you would have had oceans of soda water. Number three was Fred Hoyle's picture of an oil-rich Venus. Seas oil. Venus is probably endowed with oil beyond the dreams of the richest Texas oil king. And then number four, of course, was the dust theory, uh, the dust desert theory, according to which Venus was a desiccated planet with no water anywhere, a kind of raging dust storm, a kind of inferno, the conventional idea of hell. 